The task we are going to complete today is conduit bending board demonstration. The task assumes we have a conduit bending board, 30 feet of 3 quarter inch electrical metallic tubing conduit, and set screw couplings. If you do all the bends correctly and do not make any mistakes, you should be able to do the entire conduit bending board with three pieces of 10 feet EMT. You will need additional EMT to account for any mistakes or errors. Personal protective equipment required to complete the task include a hard hat, safety glasses, and cut resistant gloves. High visibility vest or shirts and fall protection may also be required depending on the situation. You will need a conduit bender. You will also need a tool pouch or belt that has a pencil, tape measure, level, pipe reamer, and multi-bit screwdriver. If you are using compression couplings and connectors, you will need channel locks. For training purposes, we will be using an erasable marker to make our marks on the conduit. In the field, you will want to use pencil, especially if the pipe is exposed. In the field, you are not allowed to have more than 360 degrees between pole and junction boxes. Begin at bend 1. It's a back-to-back -back 90. Begin at point A. Step 1 is determine the bender take up based on the type and size of the conduit to be bent. A piece of 3 quarter inch EMT requires take up of 6 inches. Step 2 is determine stub up height and make the proper mark on the conduit. Measure from point A to point B to determine stub up height. It is 20 and 3 quarter inches long. Subtract the 6 inch take up from 20 and 3 quarter inches. 20 and 3 quarter inches minus 6 inches equals 14 and 3 quarter inches. Mark the conduit at 14 and 3 quarter inches from the end. Step 3 is make the stub up bend. Once the stub up mark has been made, insert the bender onto the conduit and place the conduit securely on the floor. Place the arrow on the conduit bender onto the mark. Place one foot on the conduit and the other foot on the bender foot pedal. Apply equal force with your hands and foot to ensure that the bender does not slip or rise. Continue bending the conduit until the 90 degree marking on the bender is parallel to the conduit. Ensure that the conduit remains in contact with the bender for the entire length of the bend. There should be no gap between the bender and the conduit. Use a level to check the degree of bend. If for some reason the conduit is slightly overbent or underbent, take the handle of the bender and slide it over the top of the conduit to add a little or take out a little bit of bend. After you have completed the bend, position the conduit so that the end is facing up and measure the distance from the floor to the end of the conduit. It should measure approximately 20 and 3 quarter inches. Step 4 is to make the back-to-back -back bend. Measure from point B to point C on the back-to-back -back 90. It is 41 inches. To make the second bend, place a straight edge on the back of the first bend so that you can accurately measure from the back of the first bend. This could be a wall or the handle of the conduit bender. Mark the conduit all the way around at 41 inches. Bending the back-to-back -back 90, make sure to keep the first 90 degree bend straight up and down to prevent having a dog leg. Using the star point, make the second bend back towards the first using equal hand and foot pressure. Use a level to check the degree of bend.
check conduit for a dog leg. If you have a dog leg, take it out. Measure from point C to D. It is 16 and a half inches. Mark conduit at 16 and a half inches. Cut and ream conduit at 16 and a half inches. Put conduit coupling on pipe. Note, if the distance between the back-to-back -back bends is smaller, you will want to make the second bend in the opposite direction. You can do this by subtracting the 6-inch take-up from the 41 inches and marking the conduit at 35 inches. The bend would then be made by using the arrow on the conduit bender and bending away from the first bend.